I want to go when I want. It is tasteless to prolong life artificially. I have done my share. It is time to go. I will do it elegantly. Albert Einstein, one day before he died. It might sound like the plot of a science fiction movie, but following the autopsy, Albert Einstein's brain was stolen. And for the next few decades, the fallout for the thief was more than he bargained for. In the 19th century, the brains of geniuses were often preserved so that scientists could try to determine the origins of that person's intelligence. For example, half of the brain of Charles Babbage, inventor of the first computing machine, is still on display at the Hunterian Museum at London's Royal College of Surgeons. Einstein was aware that scientists might want to study his brain after his passing and explicitly forbade it, knowing that such studies rarely produce useful information. Nevertheless, when Einstein passed at Princeton Hospital in the early morning of April 18, 1955, the pathologist who examined him, Dr. Thomas Harvey, decided to remove the brain on his own initiative for future study. What happened next was a truly odd journey of the brain of one of the most celebrated scientists. Also, if you aren't already, please like and subscribe for more fascinating short stories about our history. Dr. Harvey took Einstein's brain home, divided it into 240 pieces, and stored it in two mason jars filled with celloidin. Not only did Harvey take his brain, he also removed his eyeballs and gave them to Henry Abrams, Albert Einstein's eye doctor. It's rumored that they have remained in a safe deposit box in New York City and will one day be up for auction. Shortly after Einstein's cremation, his son Hans Albert found out about the theft and was furious. But Dr. Harvey managed to solicit a reluctant and retroactive blessing from Einstein's son Hans Albert, with the now familiar stipulation that any investigation would be conducted solely in the interest of science and that any results would be published in reputable scientific journals. Taking the brain of the world's most famous physicist without permission did have professional consequences for Dr. Harvey. He soon lost both his job at Princeton Hospital and his marriage, then moved to the Midwest where he took a series of jobs either practicing medicine or running research labs. He kept Einstein's brain for the next several decades, at one point storing it in a cider box underneath a beer cooler, hoping to one day unlock the secrets of Einstein's intelligence. The fate of Einstein's brain was mostly unknown until 1978, when a reporter tracked Harvey down in Wichita, Kansas. The magazine article about Harvey brought a flood of requests for samples of the brain to study, and starting in 1985, scientists began publishing their findings. Many of these studies did claim to find some differences between Einstein's brain and that of a normal person, but they also lacked representative control groups, making their findings suspect. And even if these studies had been conducted more effectively, neurology still hasn't determined whether the physical structures of the brain actually affect a person's intelligence. In 2010, Harvey's heirs transferred all of his holdings constituting the remains of Einstein's brain to the National Museum of Health and Medicine. More recently, 46 small portions of Einstein's brain were acquired by the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia. In 2013, segments of the brain went on exhibit in the museum's permanent galleries. But many more pieces of Einstein's brain are still missing across America, thanks to Dr. Harvey's habit of giving away pieces of it to curious friends. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more History Quick Hits, fascinating short stories about our past.